going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and the next episode in my Weapon Workshop tutorial series. This is the series where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you, all the way up to the main most efficient combos you should be using and some overarching weapon theory. If you guys missed last week's episode then I went over how to use the longsword and over the course of the next few weeks I'll be putting together guides to cover each of the 14 weapons in Monster Hunter World and today we're continuing that by turning our attention to another one of my personal favourite weapons, the hammer. The hammer is one of Monster Hunter's heavy hitting powerhouse weapons, capable of dishing out some incredible damage whilst also allowing you to remain relatively mobile in combat. With a simple moveset and plenty of evasive options to roll out mid-combo, this weapon offers both flexibility and power. As one of the impact type weapons in Monster Hunter, you won't be cutting tails with this, but what you will be doing is breaking faces and taking names. Often referred to as the KO King, the hammer excels at knocking out monsters and breaking parts, and thanks to the new power charge mechanic introduced in World, hammer just got even better. Also, let's be honest, walking into battle, wielding a giant hammer, that's pretty badass. Now, before we dive in and go over the core moves for the weapon, let's talk very quickly about a couple of key hammer principles. First up, as mentioned, this is one of Monster Hunter's impact weapon types, so while it can't cut tails, it does excel at KOing monsters and breaking parts like horns. Impact damage dealt to a monster's head is KO damage, and just like building up an abnormal status like sleep or working towards a mount, when you hit the threshold you can knock out the monster and this provides you and your team a great opening to put in some serious damage. In addition to that, note that some monster weak spots are susceptible to certain weapon types. Take Diablos as an example. An impact type weapon is more effective on the head than a cutting type weapon. Meanwhile, it's much less effective on, say, the wings. So in a situation like this, it should be very clear how you should be positioning yourself in combat. Admittedly, the head isn't always the safest place to be, so understandably, you might not be there 24-7, but when there's an opening, that should always be your priority. So, with all of that covered, now let's go over the moves. I would normally start this off with the basic triangle attacks. However, since Monster Hunter World introduced a new mechanic called Power Charge, I'm going to start here because this is something you're going to want to factor into all aspects of your hammer play. Hold down R2 to charge your hammer and then pressing circle will see you activate the power charge. It's important to understand that power charge is not affected by the level of hammer charge so you don't need to wait till max. You can literally hold R2 for a split second and press circle to activate. I'll speak more in depth about hammer charge a little later but for now let's focus on the power charge. With this active your hammer now glows and you have a boost to your attack power and your stun power plus you're immune to flinching whilst attacking or charging, and this will also change the motion of your level 3 charged attack, which we'll go over later. But the power charge remains active until you either put your weapon away, or you're hit with a big enough attack that causes you to flinch or go flying. So, given that this doesn't work around a timer, this is something you should aim to maintain at all times. Before you think about attacking, or charging, or doing anything, activate this. It only takes a second and with it you're doing more damage and if you're attacking the head you'll be more effective at stunning the monster. So as you'll see in this tutorial aside from when I'm showing you guys draw attacks I'll have this active at all times and this is something you should do too. It's a slight change to the typical hammer flow of old if you played previous games so understandably it's something you'll need to get used to but work this into your hammer rotation and you'll be off to a great start. Also, if you want to activate power charge and go into something else, then rolling out after activation will allow you to skip the follow-up hit and decide what you want to do next. There are some interesting follow-up options off the back of the level 1 hit, but we'll speak more about that soon. Now, onto the core moves. Pressing triangle three times will perform your bog standard combo. I call this the golf swing combo because it ends in a powerful upswing. The final hit of the combo is by far the most powerful, so landing this not only does great damage, but this is also a great and relatively quick combo for racking up that KO. Additionally, remember that you can roll out the combo at any time with X should you lose your opening or realise that danger is coming your way. If you perform this combo whilst moving, the first overhead smash is swapped out for a side smash. That first hit is quicker, but weaker, so if your opening is limited, you can use that to quickly get into the final upswing, but if you have the time, you are far better doing this from stationary since the first overhead smash is the second most powerful hit in the combo. 
Alternatively, if your weapon is sheathed and you run towards a monster and press triangle triangle, you perform a swing, then a back swing, and from here you can go into the golf swing combo. So if you are going to attack whilst moving, this is better for damage than the combo we just covered. The one downside to this though is that being a draw attack, you won't be able to activate power charge until it's complete. But since you can sneak the power charge in at the end, it's not too much of a loss. Just make sure you don't forget. Moving on from there, you have your big bang combo. This is new in Monster Hunter World. Pressing circle five times will pull off your biggest standalone damage dealing combo. Each subsequent hit deals more damage. However, in order for this to complete, the first four hits must land. If one of those misses, the combo will end right there. So while this does do more damage than the golf swing combo or any of the charged attacks we'll go over in a moment, it also requires a good opening to successfully pull off. As such, this isn't something you'll always be able to work into every aspect of your gameplay. When the monster is moving and your openings are limited, Golf Swing should still be one of your core options. But if the monster goes down, is trapped or stunned, then Big Bang is where the damage is. We'll speak more about high damage combos during the latter portion of this video to truly take advantage of this move. But for the time being, that is Big Bang. Something else to note is that there are a couple of options to follow a triangle attack directly into your Big Bang combo. If you attack whilst moving, that weak side smash allows you to go directly into the Big Bang combo. And similarly, if going into the unsheath attack following either the first or second hit, you can also transition directly into Big Bang. You can't, however, do this from the stationary overhead smash. So in a situation where you perhaps go to begin a triangle combo and the monster goes down or an opening presents itself, know that you can transition directly into Big Bang. Now, moving on from there to talk about the other big component for the hammer, the charge attack. Holding down R2 will charge your hammer and there are three levels of charge. You can run around whilst holding the charge, but keep in mind that it uses stamina in the process, so be sure to keep an eye on this during combat, and if at any point you want to cancel this, you can simply roll out. However, depending on when you let go of the charge, you'll perform different attacks. Your level one attack is the charged side blow, your level two attack is the charged upswing, and if you input a direction with this, you can travel further during the attack. Your level three attack while standing still is the charged big bang, and if you have the power charge active, this instead becomes the brutal Big Bang. However, in addition to this, if you let go of the level 3 charge whilst moving, you'll instead go into the spinning bludgeon. This will see you spin around hitting multiple times, it's great for applying status effects and does have good damage potential, but it hinges on those hits landing, and it also does leave you a little vulnerable since you can't roll out of this mid-spin. Also during the spin, depending on when you press triangle, you can perform different finisher attacks. Pressing triangle after the first spin does the spinning side smash, the weakest option, but also good if you need to cancel the spin. Pressing triangle between the second and third spin allows you to perform the spinning follow-up, and pressing triangle on the fourth to fifth spin allows you to perform the spinning strong upswing. Now, that's a lot of moves, but which ones are actually useful to you? Well, first up, the charge side blow, the level one attack. As discussed, it is the weakest of the charged hits, but it has a ton of follow-up options. From there, you can go into the golf swing combo, the big bang combo, or if you press triangle and then circle, you can lead into what will become your biggest damage combo. Additionally, after activating power charge, if you don't roll out, you go into this hit anyway, so this is a great way to activate and then go straight into a combo. As for the level 2 charge, this is great for sniping a monster's head, given the angle it hits and the travel distance, it's very easy to let go of this and accurately hit the underside of a monster's head. Do be wary that this can send your teammates flying, but this too has a follow-up option with triangle. So if you land the first attack on the monster's head, you can then transition directly into the golf swing combo. As for your level three charge, this does decent damage, but it's not your highest damage dealer, not by a long shot. It's outperformed by the golf swing combo, the spinning bludgeon and big bang, but it is still good for damage in a small window. If your opening is tight or your positioning is off and perhaps landing the final golf swing isn't viable, then it has great utility. Additionally, the final hit of the power charge level three attack is one of your highest damage single hits. So if you're waking up a sleeping monster, this is often a good move to use. The first two hits have short range, so it's quite easy to position yourself so that the first two hits miss and then the wake up hit is the final powerful attack. Since the hit that wakes up a sleeping monster does double damage, if you're hunting alone or you don't have, say, a great sword user on your team, then this is a good wake up attack. As for the spin, as mentioned, it's great if you have status on your hammer since the multiple hits are good for proccing that. But in addition to that, if every single hit lands and you go into the final spinning strong upswing, this also does good damage. However, I personally don't like using this too much. It leaves you open since the only way to get out of it is to perform a finisher hit and then roll. Plus, the spinning nature of the attack means you won't always land all hits, and just in general, it's a little bit harder to be precise with. So while it does have value, it is a bit more situational than a lot of other moves. 
And again, if you have an opening for damage, then Big Bang still comes out on top, so I'd say use the spin for status more so than anything else. Now, that's it for the basic moves. There aren't a great deal of things to learn with regards to the hammer. It is much more about positioning and getting in the hits with the limited combos you have. However, before we move on to the big damage combos, let's cover aerial and sliding moves. While sliding down a hill, if you press triangle, you will go into the jumping charged attack, and upon landing this, you can go into your golf swing combo. However, more exciting than that, if you hold down R2 to charge your attack and begin sliding, when you let go of the charge, you'll then go into the mid-air spinning bludgeon. This is great for mounting a monster, and it's also just a really awesome looking move. If you jump off a ledge and press triangle, you perform the mid-air attack, which again can be linked into the golf swing combo. Alternatively, pressing and holding R2 whilst jumping off a ledge allows you to charge up on the way down, so if you fall far enough, you can charge up to the max. If you run up a runnable surface, pressing triangle does the standard mid-air attack, again with golf swing follow-up. Holding R2 after the jump again goes into the charging attack, but better than that, if you hold the charge before running up the wall, you'll then go into the mid-air spinning bludgeon again, so you can access that move either from a slope or a wall. Pretty handy. So, those are all of the moves. A relatively simple selection, but when paired together, you have some great damage potential. And with that being said, let's talk about big damage combos. How can you be most efficient with this weapon? And given everything you've just learned, which moves will see you dish out the maximum possible damage? First up, this is, without question, your highest damage combo. If you go from the level one charge hit into a triangle input, and then into the big bang combo, this will yield some truly impressive damage numbers. The complete combo takes just over 11 seconds to complete, so it's pretty long and as such won't be something you can always commit to, but given the opportunity, assuming the monster is down, trapped or knocked out, then this should be your number one combo. Second to that in damage, coming very close and also taking around the same time to pull off, you can instead go from the level two charged hit into a triangle attack and then into the big bang combo. There's not much in it, the combo is slightly weaker, but given the travel distance on the level 2 hit, it could be useful for closing the gap between you and the monster, given a slightly tighter opening. Third on the list is the standalone Big Bang combo. This takes just under 9 seconds to complete, does great damage, and given your conventional openings, say a flinch, a quick trip, then this is a way to kick out some good damage without having to commit to the lengthy first combo. Of course, it should go without saying that for all of these combos, power charge should be active at all times. Fourth in line is the level 1 charge attack into the golf swing combo. A little over 7 seconds to complete and some good damage, plus given that it's comprised of triangle attacks, it's also very easy to roll out of. And then finally, in 5th place is the full spinning bludgeon attack into strong upswing. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this attack as mentioned earlier unless I'm trying to proc a status effect, so if you're running with a raw damage setup, I wouldn't really use this attack a lot of the time. However, outside of the big damage combos, when you're fighting a monster and you don't have any big openings, in other words, it's running around the map, you're getting off the odd hit or combo here and there, then between the golf swing combo, level three charge hit and big bang, the golf swing combo is by far the quickest. The level three charge attack is comparable in attack time once activated, but you do need to factor in the time taken to charge up. So generally speaking, golf swing is still your bread and butter with the charge attack being your wake up move or your attack if you need to hit a precise location. And the combos listed above can be used based on the window that you have. Just always keep in mind that if you're going to go for any of those big combos, every hit of Big Bang needs to land. So if you think the monster is likely to move, or say raise its head following something like a flash, then you're better off going for the golf swing combo for guaranteed damage. But that my friends is pretty much it for the hammer. As mentioned, it is a relatively simple weapon on the move front, making it a great option to pick up if you're new to the series. But when used correctly, it's also a recipe for some incredible damage. As a passing note, there's a phrase often used by Hammer and Hunting Horn users, which is, the head is mine. Now, Monster Hunter is a game about working together and communicating, and while it is definitely possible for multiple players to attack the head without disrupting one another, do keep in mind that if you have a Hammer user on your team, they are far more valuable at the head given the impact nature of their weapon. So if you're using a cutting type weapon and you can focus your efforts on the tail, the wings or the leg, it's good to give the hammer user the opening they need to attack. There's nothing worse than trying to line up a nice KO combo only to have someone with a longsword come up behind you and just wail on the head with no regard for their team. I'm not trying to single out longsword users by the way, I love longsword, but I'm just making an example. The point is, a hammer user is much more effective attacking the head than they are, say, the tail, given the fact they can't cut. So if the monster goes down, don't always rush to the closest point, think about what will better help your team. But on that note, that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found this helpful, if you did, then a like would be super appreciated. Be sure to keep it locked as there'll be a new weapon tutorial every Sunday, but until then, thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out. <laughs>